Good morning, everyone. Andy Schwab here with your Farm and Ranch News. Commercial Agricultural Aviation is celebrating its centennial this year. Of course, the span of 100 years can certainly change the way things are done, and that's exactly what Wacy Cathy of Black Gulch Aviation told me this past weekend when I was learning a little bit more about crop dusting in the Flathead Valley. He said from the origin of spreading dust over the crops uh, to control weevils in the 1920s to science-backed liquid chemicals today, the use of aerial application is a safe as it's ever been. Most all of them that we put on, especially these potatoes, it's all fairly safe and in, in, in these low quantities, amounts that actually go on the field, you know, it's highly concentrated, but they, they go on at just gallons per acre, you know, and that's a big area. The ones that were nasty back in the day, they've continued to slowly get those out of the system, you know, and they just aren't used anymore. He added the GPS-controlled sprayer has also helped reduce the amount of product spread from the air to non-target crops. Like this is our, our main computer and we get a moving map on it and then my, my guidance is actually up here. Um, a lot of them have this unit out, mounted out in the front of the airplane called a light bar. Um, this is a little different design. And um, we run a, a flow control unit, so depending on our headwind, tailwind, Stay tuned to our website for the full story from the Flathead. Well, that's all the time we have, but join me back here shortly to look over your ag markets. We asked Montana farmer Walt Sales about the challenges of mental health in agriculture. Another drought, there always is. There's always gonna be another something. I grew up in a generation of, you pulled yourself up by your bootstraps, but it's become evident is what do you do if you can't even find those bootstraps? If you need to talk to somebody, go to beyondtheweather.com for free counseling for Montana Ag Producers. Welcome back, friends, your Ag News and your Markets. The latest USDA Crop Progress Report was released Monday afternoon that showed the nation's corn conditions fell for the first time in several weeks. On the wheat side of the equation, spring wheat harvest did kick off last week with 2% of the nation's crop harvested as of Sunday. For winter wheat, 80% of their crop was harvested as of Sunday, making another 12 percentage uh, point jump in, from the previous week and now trailing the five-year average by just three points. Zooming in from the national perspective, Montana's winter wheat harvest really got underway last week, jumping 19 points from 2 to 21 percent. That is about par for the five-year average for the Treasure State, while North Dakota is halfway behind their 16 percent average as well. Well, strong prices on the choice cut of of the box beef yesterday could help out the feedlots a little bit this week. Also playing a positive factor onto their side is the lower headcount purchased from the Packers last week as the weekly standoff well, or went well into Friday afternoon. Another cattle video sale helped producers understand how high the demand is this year. This week's video royale from Superior Livestock started with the heavy steers and heifers with those yearlings bringing close to the $2,000 per head mark. For Pay's sheep sale on Monday, demand seemed to be driven towards those heavier lambs yet again, while few coal used were offered. For the spring wheat, they worked their way back to a steady market yesterday after that USDA report lent a little bit of help. The winter wheat also, on the other hand, did drop as the harvest continues with really no issues. Well, that's all for Ag News and Markets. I'm Andy Schwab. Have a great rest of your day.